A very, very good evening to all of you. And it's so wonderful. I'm so delighted to see so many of you joining in. It's 1.45 right now. And uh, which means all of you have written names and you are preparing for your interview. And uh, huge congratulations to you already because you know you have reached this point, this stage in the examination. And uh, really, I'm extremely excited to see you all. So uh, what I assume is all of you will be appearing, appearing. I mean, written names and appearing for the interview this time. If there is anyone who is not uh, expecting to uh, appear for the interview this year, but just joining in to you know gain some knowledge and all of that, uh, I would like to know you. Please, uh, you can uh, type in the message. You can type in the chat if you are somebody new. Uh, please, I would like to know if somebody, if there's someone who is absolutely new but just joining in to, you know, uh, gain some knowledge. So, for the rest of you all, uh, yeah, how, uh, you know, how have you been preparing? How have you been preparing? Can somebody uh, uh, let me know? Can somebody type? Like, uh, have you started doing anything for the interview? Going through newspapers and current affairs only, waiting for result. That's not something you're supposed to do, actually. You should not keep waiting for the result because uh, as you have already noticed that the commission is really gearing things up and you know the process is really getting faster day by day. And therefore, it is not at all recommended to wait for the results. Because as soon as the results are declared, you will have to, uh, you will not get many days to prepare for the interview. So let's not waste any time and just ri jump right into the pre uh, preparation. Good evening, you are new. Jinti is new. Tilika is new. Oh, there are quite a few. And uh, you know, I must acknowledge that this is quite a good sign, so to speak, that you are so new, yet you are joining the inter interview guidance program, interview orientation class. And this is quite a good sign of, uh, you know, ex of a future topper. So you are doing amazing. I must say that new joining wow i am so delighted to see all the new joining the newly joined people yeah you thought this would be a history class schedule okay okay it was it, it was shared in the group that this is going to be a interview guidance class uh, even if you are new it is it would be quite helpful it's like a reverse engineering kind of thing Yes, you might be new. You may not have any basic knowledge. You may not have, uh, uh, you know, appeared for the prelims even. But you expect to go to the interview board one day, right? So it is never a waste of time. In fact, it is quite commendable that you start, uh, you know, gaining tips and tricks and whatever bits of knowledge that you can gain and acquire in this entire process to prepare yourself well. Because ultimately, interview is a test of your personality, which does not develop. A personality cannot be developed in a week, in a month. And it's, it's a lifelong process, actually. And it's better to always give time so that your personality is well developed, is, you know, your, your knowledge is brushed up, and you learn as many etiquettes as you can. So it is uh, always good to start as early as you can. Personality development through knowing myself, yes. So that is the. Uh, recommended procedure so it's already uh, 7 27 so without further ado let's start with our interview guidance program and uh, some of you uh, some people are like uh, you have or we have we have already interacted before and uh, so good to see all of you today uh, 
So the basic, the introduction of interview, as I've already mentioned a few minutes, mentioned a few minutes back, is that it's a test of your personality. Your knowledge has already been tested in the prelim stage and more so in an elaborate manner in the mains test, right? So personality in the in the uh, interview, they are looking to know you, your personality how confident you are how well behaved you are how well mannered you are uh, what is your dressing like what is your body language like uh, what kind of qualities do you have what kind of values do you have do, are you a person who values honesty who values integrity and those are some of the things that the interviewer uh, looks forward to know from you to understand from you so our main focus, our main uh, motive is to develop and brush up all those areas of our personality. And uh, since you have been uh, you have been associated with this process of APSC, or some of you may be associated with UPSC also, writing and attempting UPSC as well. So I assume that all of you have already developed a habit, a nature of working hard, of uh, discipline. Because without discipline, without working hard, without being punctual, without being sincere, I don't think somebody will cross this uh, stage of mains. So those are some wonderful qualities right. that you have already developed. So now, now is the time to practice some of the ways and uh, to pick up and practice those tools uh, through which you can express those wonderful and good qualities of yours in front of the interview board in those uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Now the time, the uh, range of the time and the duration of interview depends uh, a lot from person to person some people may be having an interview of 10 minutes on the other hand for some people it might uh, go on for uh, 40 minutes or even an hour so in that limited time how well can you present yourself how well can you express yourself and the wonderful person that you are the wonderful qualities that you have how well can you present those wonderful qualities in front of the interview board? How honest you are in answering the questions that you were, are asked? And uh, if you do not know anything, are you honest enough to let them know that you honestly, you are not, uh, you do not have that knowledge? Those are, the, are some of the key things that the interview board will be looking for. So, uh, okay, so this is the basic kind of introduction of what an interview is and what the interview panel, the board members will be looking for in you. Now, let's come to the preparation process. Now, how do we prepare? Suppose I am a person, I am a candidate who has written mains and I'm expecting to uh, uh, go to the interview this year now what do i do it may it may be uh, you know we may easily get overwhelmed because most of you might be thinking that you need to reread all that you have read you need to revise everything you need to know all the current affairs and all of that and uh, and you may be feeling quite overwhelmed so let's take a set method a procedure and structure our uh, our preparation process. In that manner, we will not feel, number one, we will not feel overwhelmed. We will know and we will have a timeline for ourselves and we'll keep ourselves on track. And also we can check that if we have prepared the main uh, key points or not. So uh, to, to prepare yourself for the interview, it is extremely important that you start from the uh, process of knowing yourself first. Now, in UPSC, there's a detailed application form, also known as TAF, right? Uh, but in APSC, you do not have to fill such a detailed application form. Yet, the questions you will be asked are, uh, you know, around those uh, questions 
itself that will be that you that is in the depth so let's take depth as an example and uh, you can prepare you can ask yourself questions you can prepare a depth for yourself for example it it will first start with your name your name if you have uh, uh, watched some of the interviews some of the mock interviews of uh, competition care or even other you uh, up it's mock interview you may have noticed many a times that they ask their name and then from there they go to the meaning of their names especially if you have uh, a different, uh, quite unique kind of name, it is very likely that they might ask the meaning of your name. And since your name has at least two parts, like your first name and your second name, which is usually your surname, they will ask um, if, if you belong to a special commun community or, uh, or a tribe, then they may ask questions regarding your community or tribe. And now let's uh, now uh, again. I want to state it once again that now we are covering the static part. Now we are not going. Oh, sorry. Now we are not going to the current affairs. One is your static part. One is your current affairs. This is this is where most people get overwhelmed and most people find it difficult. But this this one we will tackle later. Now we are, for, as of now we are uh, we are sticking to the static part, right? Uh, so okay, uh, maybe I have been speaking for the past ten minutes or so. Uh, if you have any question, you can type it out. Or uh, if you think I should slow down, or you, you have been able to follow me or not, please let me know if you are able to follow me. And if not, just let me know. Uh, and uh, are you okay with my speed and all? Are you able to follow? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. OK, most people are able to follow. OK, OK, then we'll, we'll keep proceeding. All right. So first thing is your you need to prepare a bio data. They are not asking for it. And on the interview day also, they will not ask you to hand over your bio data. But this one is for yourself, self pre preparation. Otherwise, there will be no, uh, you know, no structure. This is to structure, structure your preparation. All right. So your name, the meaning of your name, the community you come from, your address, your locality. Suppose I am from Sivsagar, right? What possible questions could be asked if a person says that he or she is from Sivsagar? Is there anyone from Sivsagar in this group? Yes, you are. So let's let's type out a few possible questions when somebody says that you are from Sivsagar. Let's say, yeah, or oh, your father was okay. Cultural importance of Sivsagar, history of Sivsagar. Yes, exactly. Historic importance. Yeah, for most people. Sivsagar equals to a home history, right? The structures, a home history, Borpukhuri, and all those things. Yeah. Similarly, okay. Yes, a home kingdom. Now, for every, every, Ranghar, yeah. Now, for every place, suppose you are from Tinsukia, suppose you are from Dibrugar, suppose you are from Dibrugar, suppose you are from Dhubri, suppose you are from Kokra. Every district, every place has a unique, has something unique, has something unique, right? You agree? Has something unique about their place. So it is very likely that the examiner, that the interviewer may ask you questions on that. So the next thing what we have to prepare about is 
where you come from, your address. Similarly, about your family, what, how your parents are occupied. Are they, are they in the civil service already? Are they doctors or what kind of profession uh, do they belong to? They might, they, they will want to know about your parents, about your siblings, like that. So a part of it is about your parents, their occupation, how they are engaged in, are they in the services, and uh, yeah, about your family in general, right, about your family. Then, then comes your educational background. Educational background. You are bachelor's in something, master's in th something, PhD. Uh, you are doing PhD in some topic. And again, if you say that you are doing PhD in something, let's say, then they'll you must prepare in detail about the subject of your PhD, about your thesis. You need to know that very well. So uh, now I will not keep talking in detail about all of these things. Let's keep touching on the main points. And later on, you can come up, you can yourself come up with questions, with the related questions that could be asked from each and every area like this. All right, then your working experience, working work experience, right? If you have worked, and how long have you been preparing for the civil services? Are you currently engaged somewhere? What are your interests, your hobbies, etc., right? What are your best qualities? What are your worst qualities? Like your strengths and your weaknesses. You know, some uh, examples from your life. Examples when you showed leadership or so, some kind of activism that you participated in. Right, some kind of activism that you participated in, some kind, some cause that you that is very dear to you, and all of that. Basically, all these questions are asked so that you are uh, so that they can know you and understand you better because they are going to employ you. You are going to work for them. Them means they represent the state. Ultimately, you are going to work for the state. Therefore, before employing you, in that short period of let's say average 20 minutes they will ask you some of the most important questions to assess you and to understand what kind of person you are so yes we have already talked about your educational background your job and all of that the kind of person you are your personality what kind of personal per person you are how is your personality are you an introvert are you an extrovert or what are your values and all of that. That is like your bio data that you need to prepare for yourself. And that is the number one, the first and first and most important thing. Most important thing that you need to do is write your bio data. Know about yourself. There's quite often we even even we do not know about ourselves unless we ask a question, unless we think about it intentionally. Even we do not know sometimes. Sometimes we do not know how do we want to see ourselves after five years, after 10 years. Sometimes even we are not sure about those questions. We are not sure about how, uh, how our family will be, how our work will be, if we want to work life balance, or if we do not want, or you know what uh, our work ethic is like. So uh, maximum questions, try to find out maximum questions that could be asked around you and your personality. Maximum questions about you. 
because all they want to know is about you. Maximum question, as detailed as you can, because it's like a chain. It keeps on going. Let's say, let's say, like I'll give my example. Suppose I am the art. I have studied architecture. When I say I have studied architecture, and also I say that I'm from Sivsagar, now they'll definitely ask me about a home architecture, right? They might uh, ask me about this, or they may ask me about the current trends, about sustainable architecture, about earthquake resilient architecture. What kind of architecture should we uh, you know, adopt? What kind of architecture uh, building should Assam or the earthquake prone zones must have? And like that, it's a chain. So to, to derive all these questions you need to give time and you need to give thought the more you'll think about the you know leading questions the questions questions after questions the more you will uh, have a detailed understanding of yourself now let's say somebody is of commerce background so they'll ask you questions regarding maybe the economy economy of Assam or the particular district you come from, how can it be improved, and things like that. Are you getting my point? Whatever unique something that you have, or we, after a few years of taking mock interview, we often find our, us, ourselves asking questions on PhD topics, some interesting PhD topics that you do like you know, something related to, say, global warming or sericulture or history, archaeology, something, something. All these interesting topics are, you know, are, uh, attracts the interviewer like a magnet, you know. Or every other thing, it kind of subsides. And these are the highlights of your interview. They, they are drawn towards you. They are, are even out of curiosity, not just to, you know, grill you. Out of curiosity, they might ask, "What is your? Uh, why did you take up this topic? What does it mean? What does the research say? How is it useful?" And things like that. They ask me about the PhD. Exactly, exactly. People do that. And from the experience of taking so many mock interviews as an interviewer myself, I find myself being drawn to PhD topics or whatever unique something that you bring to the interview board. Like they. They are also human beings like just like us. And in a in a on a particular day, they may be taking interviews of many, many, many candidates. So how do you make yourself um, stand out? Uh, so to speak, how do you sell yourself? How do you catch the interviewer's attention by bringing something important and unique, which you know will be very different from the rest of the candidates? Now. In my case, suppose I have done my studies in architecture, and uh, by qualification, I'm an architect. And I know that this that is something unique. Not many architecture students go and write the APSC, right? So I will try to purposefully, I'll try. If they ask me, then I'll, of course, I'll mention. And even if they do not ask, I'll try to uh, try to bring it out in that I will try to mention it in some form or the other, not like forcefully answering something that even they are not uh, questioning, not in that manner, but in a very logical, in a very subtle manner. I'll bring out the things that makes me stand out, that is unique about me, that is good about me. Right, ma'am, do they ask questions in detail from educational background? Yes, they may go to the basics. About educational background, whatever you have done your studies in, it is very, very likely that they'll ask you questions on that. Yeah. Sometimes they may not ask because in your particular subject, let's say, let's say um, you're a philosophy student, philosophy, and in that board, in that panel member, nobody is from philosophy or they are not interested. Then they may not ask any question at all. But if there is somebody who is interested in philosophy or who themselves have a come from a philosophy background, then they'll, they might go to the basics. So it's better to be prepared. It's better to be prepared in the subjects that you have done your education in. 
Why? Because not only that knowledge, but the impression that whenever I say that I have done my bachelor's, my master's in, in this subject, I must know the basics, right? Otherwise, it may feel like I'm bluffing. I, that means I did not study. I was not sincere in my college days, in my school days, in my you know university days. I, I was not sincere. Or you know I did not take the uh, interview as important enough to go back and do and revise my basics. So it gives a bad impression, not just the knowledge. Knowledge, not knowing something can be forgiven. But the impression that you make, And even if after preparing, uh, you may forget even your basics, even that is likely. Because some people may literally forget and some people may tend to uh, may not be able to recall out of anxiety or out of fear. That might happen. And even then, it is that not being able to answer one particular question cannot be a make or break deal. It will not make or break you. And they are kind enough. They'll forgive you if you are doing uh, good otherwise. Like overall, if you're performing well, then not knowing one or two questions will be easily forgiven. So you not need not worry for that. All right. So yes, uh, coming back to the main question, uh, revising your basics is very, very important. OK. Uh, I thought I'd say something at the very onset of this class, but somehow I had forgotten to say to mention that. But now, uh, still, I, um, I want to go back and I want to state something like before you do anything, before even you prepare your own bio data, I want to, do, uh, I want you to do uh, reset. Like I want you to reset. Reset what? Your mindset. Reset your mindset. What am I trying to say? But reset your mindset. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is some people uh, have this innate fear of interview. Interview fear. How many of you are afraid of interviews, are like terrified by interviews, terrified by the very word, by the very name, by the very word of interview? It you know, terrifies you. Nervous, you see. There are many people who are terrified, who are absolutely terrified by interview. And uh, also, uh, Many people who have been, you know, some seniors probably who have been uh, associated with this process of uh, civil services examination, APSC and UPSC, or maybe through YouTube, some people uh, may pass a wrong message, like they interview, oh, they, uh, they grilled somebody so and so there that board is very you know very strict that board is very that board is very tough that board is very strict they are very cruel they are they literally grilled so and so they grilled my friend they grilled somebody you know all these messages please stay away from such rumors i'd say please stay away from such beliefs they are not there to grill you that is my first point of resetting your mindset. I'm lagging. Is it for everybody or only for Anindita? No. I think Anindita, you need to check your internet connection. So they're not out there to grill you. Because if you come with a belief that, that they are out there to grill you, that you'll be like literally to get to you, they'll get so much fun and enjoyment by doing something, you know, by threatening you. That is a totally, totally, totally wrong approach. First thing you need to do is reset your mindset. Forget that this is, you know, you need to get, uh, you need to take a very positive approach very positive approach you need you need to purposefully think of your examiners of sorry your interviewers 
as kind as benevolent people as your loving senior who will teach you if you do not know something but they will never grill you and they came to select you not to eliminate you you need to change the whole perception about the interviewers you need to think them as kind people as benevolent people as loving seniors and people who whose sole purpose of sitting there day in day out whole day they are sitting there to select you and not to eliminate you right because if you are the, conversely if you go with a negative belief that they are grilling you that they are torturing you that they are trying to eliminate you and not select you i mean why would they do that they do not have any personal enmity with any of you right they do not know you personally you have not harmed them in any way why would they do that to you they are just sitting there doing their duty right so they will ask questions to understand you to know you out of curiosity or they are just doing their job but there's no personal hate uh, feeling of hatred they, that they have for you so tackle everything with a smile they are asking something good smile they are asking something difficult smile in all situations just keep smiling so <clears throat> let's say the difficulty level of their first question is somewhere here the difficulty level will keep on decreasing and come down here as the time passes when when you smile when you keep smiling they'll also smile with you they will be tempted to ask you good questions easy questions and even if you cannot answer to some of the questions they'll just smile or if you, even if you cannot answer something silly something very basic that you are supposed to know then they'll laugh at you when you are not able to answer something very silly okay just keep smiling it improves the uh, overall atmosphere the of the interview room otherwise if you do not smile if you are tense on the other hand the interviewer or, or will be tensed and the whole board member the whole panel will be tensed you will be more tensed and the tension will keep on increasing if you do not smile and get too serious and nervous and all of that on the other hand if you smile and the whole atmosphere inside the interview room will be very jolly and your interview will go on very very well please remember it mark my word this is the biggest so called tip if i have to give for you is to smile and try to you know make a relation relationship with the uh, panel members with the interviewers the relationship is what you are going to make just go with the uh, with the intention that you are going to enjoy in enjoyment is my second word smile is my first word enjoy your 20 minutes because you have worked so hard for this you have worked so hard maybe at least for one year right at least for one year some of you may be working for more than two one year two three years i do not know but since you have worked so hard for this day for that wonderful precious day and you are getting 20 minutes to prove yourself to you know express yourself trust me you are already a wonderful person you are just there to express you are not going there to pretend you are not going there to impress you are going there to express in 20 minutes you are going to express yourself and you are going to enjoy right please do not forget all these three words to smile to reset your mindset to express yourself no pretension be yourself just be the authentic self that you are and enjoy the 20 minutes that you have worked so hard for okay and again coming back to this thing we said your mind to some people consider the examination as battle they quite often mention it 
battle the battle begins the war begins and all of that their, their vocabulary is like that battle oh i i want a war the next war is there and all of that avoid avoid using such words because your words shape your your mindset your words shape your mindset if you think of if it even you may not be very conscious about speaking those words you may casually say that oh it's a battle it's a war but then your subconscious mind picks it up it considers exams or interview or why why something difficult or something not fun or something hard not enjoyable or kind of a punishment or something like that okay it's none of it it's none of it it's fun it's enjoyment rather call it a game replace the word battle by the word game it's a game that you're playing and you need to have fun and enjoy in the process it's a game it's completely a game it's exactly like a game like in games you have you know level 1 level 2 you reach there and you unlock something and you gain some powers and you reach the next level right this is exactly like a game when you call it a game you will have fun and you will enjoy okay am i making sense are you able to relate let's take a break and hear from you please share your interview experience and how you answered them my interview experience was like smooth was a breeze was so fun i had so much fun I, exactly I, i am sharing with you from my interview experience because i had so much fun i enjoyed that absolutely those 20 25 minutes that i had with the panel and it was a wonderful and lovely interaction with the board members i got to know them they got to know me more i got to know them a little bit and it was a very wonderful uh, boat way interaction and it was like i absolutely enjoyed i still uh, you know i have fond memories of that interview it went on very well they liked me because i smiled <laughs> because i smiled and i answered i was able to answer most of the questions i think one or two questions maximum two i guess i was not able to answer actually i at that time there was optional i had psychology optional and there was a question that one of the members asked and although I answered the, uh, that answer was not correct uh, she said that no it is actually like that so uh, that was my interview like and another question i think i was not able to answer at all and apart from that i could answer uh, everything else and uh, they really they expressed it to me while at the end of the interview they expressed it to me that they liked me and i had a wonderful experience and also i scored well i scored uh, my my interview marks was i think uh, the third highest mark of that time so it was lovely what was the first question you were asked actually i i'm not able to remember the very first question that i was asked i cannot sorry i cannot recall the very first question i was asked most probably it was about my educational background most probably it was about architecture or if not then about my optional that is psychology probably those two other two probabilities about dress yes dress is very important i'll come to the dress dress is one of the most you know it's a big chunk that we need to uh, you know address or give importance to i'll come to the dress part okay so um yeah now that i talked about your bio data i have already talked about your mindset mindset first then preparing bio data right mindset first then bio data after preparing your bio data in as much detail as you can then you can come to your studies part like studies means revision studies revision now what are you going to revise your uh, about your educational background now that you do not have optional so that you it's good that you do not have to read the uh, your optional subject but can we say no directly yes you can say no directly but not 
in a rude manner in a very humble manner say sorry apologize sorry ma'am or sir i'm not able to recall it at the moment or sorry sir i do not have a fair idea or i have not heard of the whatever term uh, they may be asking analysis of fact based both both i would say for most people it would be a mix of both analysis and fact based okay let's uh, i'll i'll stick to my structure okay uh, after study uh, yeah and when it comes to studies you'll do revision do revision of your education of your subject of whatever subject your background is from and another thing is a little bit of your gs part or you know if you forget or you may avoid this part also you need not actually and uh, also current affairs absolute main topics main actually contemporary affairs i should say contemporary not affairs but issues contemporary issues that our society is going through contemporary issues which is different from current affairs it's like not detailed minute topics or facts they are not looking for detailed topics or facts or anything because all those are tested in prelims already what they may ask is about contemporary issues that assam or india or the world may be going to like the big big the biggest of the issues they may be asking you questions or your opinion opinions views regarding that or in or some general topics like gender equality you know protection of children or you know general general topics or current contemporary topics right child marriage yeah yeah they can definitely ask you questions regarding that yes child, yes definitely when it comes to assam like general issues like witch hunting and all that right education like that is always there or always a lingering topic education healthcare and all that and international relations issues wars and all that okay so the main they they will not ask you about facts and even if they ask they, they'll most likely not ask you about facts and figures like manipur like burning issue they'll obviously ask <clears throat> ethnic clashes and all that women all of that they'll ask definitely they'll do that and the politics involved behind it they'll definitely ask you and know your opinion there might be critical questions also and then you need to uh, reply that very uh, you know in a very smart manner while staying true to yourself and true to the state that you are going to work for <sighs> now the facts you need not facts and figures no one and integrities no one is asking you main issues issues are the most important things and maybe some ethical questions ethic ethics based questions you might be given a situation based question you might be given a situation and you may be asked what would you do in such and such situation right you will be asked all of that so now my my first point was preparing about your bio bio data personality knowing about yourself these things will help you know about yourself and then the subjects and then current or contemporary issues why because why am i keeping the current affairs to the last because suppose you do not know something that is going on in in this world you will be pardoned you will be forgiven why because you are a human being you may not know a few things it is not possible for a human to know all of the things that is going currently or let's say today is the interview day and yes something happened yesterday and you are not aware of that that is that will be forgiven but when you do not know about yourself that is that cannot be forgiven that is a unforgivable uh, sin not knowing about yourself because you are supposed to be a well a, a, an aware and a woke and aware person if you do not know about yourself 
how can they expect you to know about your district, about your state, about others? Because as a civil servant, you need to be empathetic. You need to understand. You need to be aware. You need to have all the information. So very first thing starts from yourself. If you do not know about yourself, you're, if you're not aware of your strengths and weaknesses, they cannot expect such a person to understand to, or to know about a state or others or the society or at large the country, right? So that is, uh, that is not pardonable. The very first thing, know about yourself in and out as detailed as you can. Know and understand about yourself. And secondly, about your subjects and then about the current contemporary issues, right? So that is uh, another thing. So here, your studies and reading materials and mugging up things, everything ends here. Now let's come to the dress part. Um, for women, Mekhala Sadar is recommended. You may also wear sari, but my personal opinion is that it is better to wear Mekhala Sadar because it is a state, uh, it is APSC, it is a state board. So uh, I would advise you to wear Mekhala Sadar instead of sari or even uh, even salwar kameez instead of wearing that even that because we are after all indians no one can stop you from from wearing that but still i would advise you to wear uh mekhala sadar and which should be sober in color nothing too bright not too not tacky of course not too bright not very like transparent translucent materials also are not recommended it should be sober. It should be uh, fully covering. And in light or neutral colors, like white, beige, gray, or brown, or very light or pastel pink may also be worn, or very light or pastel uh, blue can also be worn. And uh, light colors like that. Mostly stick to those light colors. Uh, I would personally prefer white, beige, and green. And uh, um, that is for uh, for women. And uh, you can wear comfortable sandals that is matching with your attire. That that could be brown. That could be black. And you can wear a little bit of heel like say two inches or three inches if you're comfortable do not wear too much uh, like too high a heel because naturally it, it might be uncomfortable for you uh, to wear it day long if required because you never know you need to be comfortable you can wear two inches of heel and uh, you can wear flat also if you're not comfortable in wearing any heel at all but if you wear a little bit of heel like two inches it will like elevate your look and uh, uh, it will make you feel more confident and feel more taller and you'll feel more confident right you can wear uh, brown colored tan colored or black colored sandals that is about the footwear dress i have already spoken you can wear a watch a more formal kind of watch you can wear digital watch also these days people wear but make sure that it, that it is not very loud and like drawing attention kind of a watch it should not be bling of course it should be a formal watch and uh, <clears throat> about jewelry uh, you can wear your daily daily whatever you wear in a, on a daily basis that minimal kind of jewelry you can wear a, a pearl necklace necklace by necklace i mean a pearl chain i i wore a pearl a single layered pearl chain in my interview or even gold also if you wear that on a daily basis or if it is minimal and walk wear type of jewelry and similarly you can wear uh, studs you can wear uh, I, I wore pearl earrings you can wear a simple pearl or whatever gold or silver platinum whatever you prefer but it must be sober and minimal and nothing too catchy or you know not too big or too loud right so that is about your jewelry and about your hair uh, i would say it should be neatly if you have like 
shoulder length or shorter hair that you or you know pixie cut or something like that if you normally keep open you cannot tie then you can keep it open just make sure that you comb it quite neatly and uh, if required you may use some gel kind of things or fixer kind of things to fix those flyaways like, like make sure that no uh, hair is flying here and there and spoiling your look it should be neatly combed and tied and if you have long hair you can tie it into a bun or you can make uh, uh, plates out of it and just make sure that ultimately your look is uh, quite neat and tidy and if you tie you can use black colored clips or black colored um, hair ties not you know red or pink or something that draws attention it should be like camouflage with your hair that is about the hair and finally about the makeup makeup you can use <clears throat> you can use uh, minimal work work kind of like makeup uh, you can use nude colored lipstick or like very light colored pinkish kind of lipstick you can use little very little bit of blush also like which looks natural like you are naturally blushing nothing too loud and you can draw your eyebrows a little bit i i did all of these things i drew my eyebrows a little bit i use a little bit of lipstick and i i use a little bit of just a little bit of blush uh that's what i did <laughs> and you can use a very a mild perfume a mild fragrance is recommended and of course <laughs> like every other thing not overuse um very mild and sweet fragrance will always enhance your experience so those are the things for girls and uh, come now come coming to men coming to men uh, you can wear like some classic colors are there like blue blue is like widely worn by uh, men in formal setups blue you can use you can use white and brown also brown colored pants white colored shirts you a shirt you can wear you can wear blue colored uh, shirt and navy blue colored trousers uh, those are the you know common combinations for men and you can use tie uh, if it is in the if it is very hot you can avoid doing all the blazer like full suit look you can avoid that or if you're comfortable you can wear that depending on the weather wherever whenever the interview is held or uh, if you avoid the blazer and all you can you can just wear the formal uh, shirt trouser and uh, tie that should be enough and uh, coming to footwear uh, and also belt belt is also important you can use a brown colored belt or a black colored belt and uh, your shoes your shoes sh should preferably be a new one if not new it should be clean well polished no dust no dirt and the formal shoe of course your lace must be tied very neatly and not that you know loose lace and somehow you're putting your shoe not like that properly formally and your socks buy please buy new pair of new pair of socks it's a very important day and of course there should be no holes and it should not be smelly at all <laughs> make sure your your socks are you know <laughs> your socks are well washed neat well dried and clean and uh, preferably white color or cream color right that is about the socks and shoes and about the hair i have already said you can uh, you can trim it trim your hair if it's if it's too long you can trim or you can in any way uh, anyways boys uh, do trimming quite often right so but i would what i would suggest that both for men and women it is very important that you do not get a haircut just before the interview especially boys do not get a haircut just before the interview because you must already have noticed or felt that uh, like right after you cut your hair you feel you do not feel very comfortable right your look is a little bit weird kind of feeling it only adjusts you know you feel natural only after about say three four days or after a week you feel good again you feel naturally your haircut is like uh, becomes more proper and looks good on you right so do not get a haircut or trim your hair right before the interview take at least a week 
at least a week in between. Give a gap of a week at least. After that, you will look better. You will look more na natural in your new look, and you will look better. And also about your beard and mustache, you need to trim, and uh, it should be well trimmed. And also, uh, smelling good for boys is also recommended. Uh, you can use a mild uh, perfume. So these are the basics about your grooming part, about how you are supposed or expected to look in your interview. And also, if possible, some people have the habit of wearing many, many uh, gemstones or rings, like your hands. Some people, they wear a handful of five, five, and five or 10 rings. If you do that, I would personally recommend that or on the interview day, at least, you can remove most of your rings. Or even if you have some kind of belief, maybe you can uh, wear it in some hidden part that you maybe inside you can carry a gemstone if you have uh, if you are very particular about your beliefs but it should not many rings uh, spoil your look actually it should not be visible it should not you should not appear like you are a very superstitious kind of person or very strict or religious kind of person the more secular you appear the better it is and even when it comes to some religious threads or whatever that symbolizes uh, religion or faith or things like that so you can avoid that <clears throat> right that is about the grooming part and if you have any questions regarding the grooming part you may ask now men and women both because in the next half I will go to the uh, body language part and your belief part no questions? Someone has a tattoo on visible part of body. Does that make a bad impression? Now, actually, our society is very divide, has a very divided opinion. Like people are divided on the basis of, uh, you know, pro tattoo or against tattoo. So um, you never know. It depends on person to person. Also, uh, if you have a tattoo on a visible part which cannot be hidden or camouflage or you know then that is it that's hope for the best you cannot do anything about it now isn't it if you have in hand or shoulder you maybe you can wear a, a full length blouse or otherwise just let's go with the best expectation right hair hair for men or women pinku i'm sorry your name is a unisex name so i'm not sure men cut short like not zero cut or like that like normal short means well trimmed hair use you can use something that keeps your hair in place like uh, oil or gel or whatever you use normally and you can brush your hair normally it should look clean and that's it braces no it will not make a bad impression no it will not make because that's not your fault, right? You have you are doing something to correct it, in fact. You are trying to correct maybe your misaligned teeth or whatever your issue is. So no, it will not make a bad impression, no. It's a kind of a medical come aesthetic approach, or like uh, you know, remedy that you are taking. So no. Okay, done. No. So far, have you been able to follow me and are you finding it beneficial? I hope my approach is able to help you. You are benefited from the approach that I'm taking. Right? Okay. All right, then. Probably, yeah. So maybe your issues are being taken care of. I mean, uh, you, your answers are being addressed. The questions are being addressed. So let's, is somebody raising hand or by mistake? OK, so let's, let's, Tanvi Hussain, do you have any uh, question in mind? Yes, Tanvi, you can speak or you can type it out. You want to ask something, Tanvi? OK, you can speak, yeah. 
Hello, good afternoon. Good evening, ma'am. Oh, I, I, I won't hear. Okay, please type it out. Okay. Okay. Uh, by the time she types it, let's keep moving to the second part. Uh, to the uh, we are almost coming to the towards the end. Ask about facial expression. Okay, that that I'm going to address now about your body, about your facial expression. Okay, so uh, first things first, you need to be confident. While uh, we'll start. About the mustache, you can uh, after after my session, sir will be taking a session. You can ask him. I have I have already shared my opinion, and being a man, I think he can address it better. Okay, so yeah, about facial express. First thing about your body, you need to stand straight or sit straight. Whatever you are doing, your shoulders should be uh, uh, straight and slightly towards the back which means that you are confident and you are like uh, you are expressive you are not closing down you are opening up you are open to interaction you are confident about interacting you're confident about yourself you think of yourself as a smart as a as an intelligent being and you are ready to take on this session you are ready to answer questions that they are asking you and you are open to an interaction, you are transparent, you are not trying to hide anything. Those are the subconscious subliminal messages that you give when you open up your when your shoulders are straight and you sit straight and you look into the eyes of the other person, person sitting across you. Uh, you can look straight forward, you, you can look straight into their eyes, which means you are bold, right? So right from entering the interview room, you need to take speci special care of your posture. When you open the door of the interview room, make sure that you that the, your entire body is right in front of the door and you are opening the door. Not that your legs are somewhere, you are bending down and you're opening the door and you're trying to peep. Hello, may I come in? That should not be the voice, neither that should be the posture, right? You need to be fully present from your head to your toe must be seen when you're asking for the permission of getting into the room. They, you must be visible from head to toe. You must stand there confidently. You must open the door and ask politely, ma'am, sir, may I come in? With a, with a very confident, yet a very sweet and humble voice and with a smile in your face. Okay? now they have okay they have yeah, uh, gave they have given you permission they've asked you to come in do not just come in and take your seat as if the office belongs to you and you are the boss right you wait there you greet them one after another like uh, address address the persons the panel the panelists the interviewers address them good morning sir good morning ma'am or good afternoon with whatever time your interview is in Good morning, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. You greet them, and then they'll ask you to sit. Most of, by the time they they nat naturally they'll ask you to please take your seat. Something like that they'll say. They'll ask you to take your seat. Only then you are allowed to sit. Do not just go and grab your seat as if you they owe it to you or you know it's your office. Wait for them. Greet them because you are not going there to sit. Sitting is not your motive sitting is not your goal to go and grab the seat first right you are going for the interaction the important point is when you do not even look at the seat seat when you go and greet them one one by one which means you are putting the emphasis on them you are making them feel important you are making them feel good about themselves that they are they are sitting there working so hard for sitting there for hours and hours for you. So you are being grateful to them and you're giving importance to them. So greet them one after another and then they'll ask you to sit. Or after that, pull your chair, sit comfortably. If you are carrying a bag, you ladies specifically, if you're, if you're carrying a bag, you can keep the bag on the floor. 
never on the table of the interviewer that do not do don't do or even don't keep anything for that matter on the table of the interview not your phone not your files right keep your bag on the floor and your files if you're carrying a file it is not mandatory that you carry a file but it is not written anywhere that you must carry these these documents it's not written but for our safe side most students including me i carried a file so if you carry your if you carry a file it should be on your lap and do not carry your phone or if you carry your phone you for your phone should be in silent or switch off or flight mode and it should be inside your bag or otherwise do not carry your phone if, if you have some parent or friend wait, waiting for you outside you can keep it with them bag should be on the floor and your uh, certificates the your documents should file should be on your laps and do, but do, do not keep holding on to your documents tight keep it relaxed on your lap or maybe keep it inside your bag if it's possible like that and uh, so that your hands are free to express you need uh, like we often use like i am using a lot of hand gestures therefore i'm able to express myself better i'm feeling more natural in expressing myself had somebody tied my hands or had i held my hands under the table like hiding my hands under the table i won't feel as comfortable i won't feel as natural in speaking and also uh, it it is said body language experts say that when the other person sees your hands when your hands are visible then you you are likely to gain gain trust the other person is able to trust you when they see your hands right it's like a uh, we human beings are wired that way when you do not see the hands see the hands of somebody you are like kind of suspicious oh the person's hands are not visible maybe they are carrying something uh, harmful maybe they are carrying some arms or something so uh, that way this is the protective measure that human beings have been taking and this is the way of analyzing the situations of safety uh, that we have been doing and this is how we have evolved so whenever we see hands and hand gestures and we see open gestures you know then we find that person more trustworthy but having said that it is important to know that do not overuse now i am kind of using fully using my hands why because uh, i am the teacher and you are the students i am the authority here therefore i am using like bold hand gestures however on the interview day you are subordinate like you are under the panel members and you are showing respect to them therefore do not use hand gestures as if you are trying they are your students and you are trying to explain something to them because across the you know, i have had that experience by taking so many mock interviews i have come across one or two students when we ask them the question they try to answer as if we do not know anything and we are their students and they, they are being the teacher and trying to explain when we ask something as an interviewer it's not that we do not know and we want you to explain it to us that is not usually the case we want we ask you because we want to know your perspective or we want to test your knowledge so do not never never ever treat the examiners or sorry the interviewers like as if they are your students and you are teaching them do not go into that explanatory tone like the tone i am talking right now because i am explaining it to you never go into that tone of talking as if you are explaining uh, your topic your subject to the interviewer right you are just answering so uh, your your voice should not be timid at the same time it should not be of too of like over confidence or over smartness kind of right we need to take care of that i'll come to the voice part later uh for now now that you have said you must say thank you thank you and you now and you uh, like sit upright and uh, look at the interviewers expecting them to ask you questions and they'll start asking you questions one after another like where if they are directly ask you questions then you'll answer that suppose they ask you that mr uh, miss tanvi or mr someone Uh, Ms. Ritashi, uh, tell tell us some tell us about yourself. Introduce yourself. If you get open-ended questions like that, that means you are so lucky, and the interview is in your hands. You can direct the course of that interview. 
you can when you are allowed to speak about yourself you are going to talk about the most important things and you are purposefully going to drop those important topics where be it the place of your, your origin or you know your some your educational background or your work experience people might be having interesting work experiences working for ngos saving animals and you know, fighting for human rights or of lgbtq community or whatever whatever is a winning point that may raise that has the potential of raising curiosity you will intentionally drop those uh, you know words or you know bombs in that uh, interview while while you introduce yourself in in your introduction right so that means you get the uh, you have the, uh, you you kind of direct the course of the interview and if not you are going to answer what the examiner is asking you and wanting to know still even if your interview takes the second course which is the interview ask you direct questions yet in those questions you will get the opportunity to talk about what you are an expert at there are some points some uh, few some topics that we all are very uh, you know enthusiastic about that we are very passionate about somebody is passionate very passionate let's say i'm i'm very passionate about design i like aesthetics so i will get an opportunity some way or the other if even if the question is about something else i can bring up this topic of you know design or whatever i'm passionate somebody may be very passionate about you know sports right so let's let's let's, let's take this as an example let's say somebody is very passionate about cricket now the examiner is not talking about cricket and they will not talk about cricket because they do not have a deaf in their hand right so they do not know that it is your hobby or interest suppose they ask you what made you uh, what made you write this apsc examination is it your parents that forced you to write your apsc examination so you being a smart kid you being a smart person you are not just no uh, yes my parents for, asked, want, want wanted me to have a good job a good status therefore i am writing apsc not that of course not and not just like no it is my own will i'm i'm trying to do this not that you can you can say that uh, yes i'm 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 passionate about uh, about helping human beings about helping the society about contributing to the society i want to <clears throat> sorry excuse me i want to get involved in a job or i want to be in a position where i can use a uh, maximum of my time in helping people yes you can say all of that and so you can slide in like uh, i have few other passion also uh, in between i was like uh, um, i played cricket i still play cricket i was a you know state level player or something but still apart, um, after doing all of that after trying everything Uh, i realized that civil service is the best option for me let's say i answered in that way now that i have dropped in that i was a state level player don't you think the interview will ask you where did you uh, like for which team did you play which year did you play like what all did you do how did you train or related questions related to that topic that uh, cricket or whatever sport that i have mentioned what do you think i can bring it if i intend to i can put it inside the uh, like layered in between my answers right whatever topic i am passionate about talking and i'm good at i can talk about that so this is just an example you can do that in everything like if you are you know if you are doing a phd in a very interesting topic about archaeology or something if you you know passionate about traveling or whatever if you you know previously working at some uh, unesco unicef you can bring those interesting topics into your you can you know entwine it you can uh, you know use it in your answers so that the 
interviewer or interviewer gets uh, hooked on those key points interesting key points that you have just mentioned that is it okay so i had to talk about this now and again coming back to the body language part your expression somebody asks what is your face uh, what is the what should be your facial expression like as i said you must appear calm and you must keep smiling like when you smile you will naturally be calm like you cannot be smiling genuinely and be anxious at the same time you cannot do both at the same time so to beat your anxiety or nervousness you need to smile and smile genuinely like smile from your eyes like smile like literally happy and smile from your eyes not like that is not the kind of expression now like your eyes are straight at here that is not smile and that is very easily understood smile with your eyes smile with all the whole of your face involved like genuinely smile why because that is such an important day for you forget about the final results forget about uh, how much mark you will gain from that interview how much mark you will be uh, you will be given but that day itself that moment of being inside the interview room you have been dreaming about that for a year for a year or years and years for some people like are you able to realize the importance and the miraculousness i mean i don't know if such a word exists the how much blessed you are how much important that day is to live and breathe in that day to be inside the interview room do you, do you realize how exciting it is how important it is and how blessed you are your prayers are answered that is why you are there in that very room in those few minutes and that is a big big reason that is a big enough reason for you to smile and smile and smile throughout and be happy about it because it's a dream come true isn't it do you agree it's your dream come true why won't you smile right so keep smiling but don't laugh but smile but if you are asked about whatever recent uh, incidents that happened in manipur for example do not smile then you need to respect the the people who are uh, who went through such terrible incidents you need to respect you need to you know you need to maintain a very sober very sober facial expression when it comes to grave issues like that some heinous crime that happened when you know when you get to know that kind of issues the kind of reaction we have we naturally we do not smile isn't it we we never smile we are often shocked we are grieved we are saddened so we need to pay that tribute we need to respect them and we need to humble down we need to sm stop smiling empathetic yes right accept those situations keep smiling you ask something you ask about something you ask about yourself even then you can smile you ask about some topic and then you can like if you are asked about some technical data or something it's not funny like don't smile as if it's funny but of course you can reply in a with a slight smile like a with a pleasant face is what i mean to say with a pleasant face this this much smile with, with a pleasant face you can reply to the answer or oh, sorry reply to the question pleasantness is what i mean to say okay and when you ask about personal questions then you can completely smile right and eye contact you need to make eye contact with the examiner who is uh, with the interviewer who is asking you the question but as well as you need to you need others to be engaged as well you need you do not want to be uh, others to be zoned out because you will you'll have to collect member uh, number marks from all of the members 
like four, five, I, I do not know how many members will be there. But everyone has to give you marks. You want marks after all. The motive is gaining marks, right? So you need to impress everyone. You need to engage everyone, first of all. If somebody is bored and not interested, if, if they are not engaged in your conversation, they will naturally not give you good marks. So your motive is to gain maximum marks from maximum, uh, like from all of the interviewers. So you need to keep all of them engaged and interested and eager to listen what you are talking about. Therefore, eye contact is important because you want marks. Do not forget from everyone. You want marks from you want each of the interviewer to give you marks. Therefore, you need to keep them engaged and interested. And again, when they ask you something, try to stick to the topic. Do not make it too long or, or they will be bored. Try to stick to the topic as much as it is possible and uh, speak with relevance. And uh, yes, that is about answering. And uh, I have already uh, talked about when you do not know something, you can politely say that uh, with, apolo with an apology that Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, sir. I'm not able to recall, or I do not know about this. Or I'm not well aware of this. I have not read this. Whatever is your case, right? So you will speak like that. Now, I uh, and throughout your interview, I've talked about your body posture, straight and confident, hand gestures, eyes, smile. I think I have covered everything. And also, some people have the uh, uh, have the habit of shaking legs especially when they are nervous or tapping their fingers. Uh, be careful that you do not do such gestures because, because that simply implies that you are nervous, you are anxious, and the whole vibe of your interview will go down. And uh, so to avoid uh, those things from happening, the best thing you can do is practice, practice from now onwards. Practice in front of the mirror. Everybody has, their, has a mirror. Uh, in their homes so practice in front of the mirror practice introducing yourself in front of the mirror prepare an introduction for yourself and speak in front of the mirror and also do vocal exercises there's a very wonderful wonderful video on youtube about vocal exercises when you do vocal exercise your voice will be very uh loud and clear and you will very you will be very uh, speaking very eloquently and fluently when you do those vocal exercises and your tone will be maintained right it will not be too low and squeaky it should not be too high pitch it should be just right just right the right amount of loudness and pitch and everything so that is about vocal exercise. Another thing I want to say is about uh, about body postures. Like just before entering the interview, you can go to, uh, in your personal space, like in your room, as well as before entering the interview. Is uh, the you can use the washrooms because I I did that uh, when in in my waiting period in my waiting time I went to the washroom that is there in APSC building. And there, even there, I practiced a uh, power posture, which is like uh, the way uh, Superman, Superwoman stands, right? right. Like straight, uh, your sh shoulders straight, and your hands on your hips, and breathe, and say some affirmations like, you are the best, you are the most confident, they will definitely love you, they'll definitely select you, because you are so smart, you are intelligent. I mean, you, you say in, like, first, I mean, first person, right? I I'm smart. I'm confident. I feel great today. People love me. People love to talk to me. They listen to me when I speak. I have important things to speak. People are impressed when I talk. Those are some kind of affirmations that you can use. You can make actually uh, uh, write down a list of affirmations. I feel confident. I am uh, a wonderful speaker. I'm a wonderful orator. If you if you if you practice such affirmations, you will be able to speak better. You will feel less anxious. You your you will find good words to say. So, uh, I'm a master at speech. Those kind of affirmations uh, you can use. I am the best. I am wise. I am intelligent. I am presentable. I am pleasant. 
those are some of the inf uh, affirmations that I used. Excuse me, I just had a call. I declined it, but uh, is it OK now? Are you able to hear me like before? Am I audible? OK, yeah. Uh, use those, those affirmations, stand straight. I did that in the uh, washroom as well. And extends, And before the interview, I practiced that a lot in my home. So stand in front of the mirror, smile at yourself, feel good about yourself, feel grateful about yourself, and talk good things about yourself to yourself. Don't go and speak about yourself to somebody else, like, I'm the best. You will appear to be very arrogant. Don't do that. But to yourself, speaking kindly about yourself to yourself is more important. So uh, uh, so speak affirmations. You may also write down, write a script that you are selected, that the interview board love to talk to you, that they you know, love to interact, to interact with you, that they give you good marks, and all of that. You can imagine that. You can write that down. You can speak that out like affirmations. And uh, yeah, that is the practicing part. And also, I had already uh, talked about it before, that you reset your mindset, go with a very positive belief that they are a group of people who are very friendly, who are warm, and looking forward to having a good and interesting conversation with you, actually. Those people are like uh, most, most likely that they will be like, uh, one or two maybe retired members also. But most people are like working, like they are tired and bored people they are already bored in their work lives right most likely they're bored working they're tired of working uh, give them some uh, breather give them some uh, something important to talk about like entertain entertain them so to speak in those minutes that you get to talk to them uh, let them enjoy talking to you let them you enjoy and let them enjoy the time they have with you let them have a wonderful fruitful like interesting conversation with you so yeah these are the main uh, things that i would like that i had to share about interview preparation i i hope it uh, help it will help you a lot if you put it into practice like go home today if you're outside i mean if you're already at home do all that i have shared i hope you have noted down a few things noted down the things important things that i have shared today with you because this is the master key this will definitely definitely help you in scoring very high marks in interview because i myself did that and i'm sharing to you the exact things that i did and it it helped me scoring high marks and in later stages also i have helped many uh, many people who uh, were appearing interview and each of them have reported to me that yes that whatever uh, suggestions that i gave them it really helped them so i'm very confident that if you put into practice whatever i have shared if you adopt that mindset the mentality that i have shared and you do all those practices that i'm sharing with you today i'm very very confident that you will gain high marks there's nothing that can stop you because you are already brilliant people and uh, these are just few master strokes that you need to do, that you need to practice. And I'm absolutely confident that you will gain high marks and nobody can stop you. So start from today. Start practicing in front of the mirror, mirror from today. Start practicing affirmations. Write down a list of affirmations that you have the most beautiful smile, you have the most pleasant smile. Why will they not want to talk to you? Why will they not want to hire you? They are waiting for you. They want you. You are desired, you are so interesting, you are so knowledgeable, you are so intelligent, you are the most intelligent candidate that they'll come across on your interview day, right? They'll absolutely love talking to you because of all the hard work that you have done throughout your life up till that day, because you have a wonderful personality that you have developed, that you have so much good things to share with the interview board as well as with the society, right? So yeah, uh, so that is it. Uh, after this, I will hand over to Sir. If you have any questions, please drop down your uh, drop your questions quickly in the chat box. And after that, Sir will take over. 
thank you most welcome and i i want to thank you actually that's very nice thanks a lot thanks a lot thanks a lot i absolutely love talking to you this was a wonderful interaction and thank you so so much for joining in and please 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 practice please practice and reach out to me if you have any confusion regarding whatever your um, your dress your preparation whatever and uh, yes please uh, thank you so much for joining in live and wonderful